father returning home. Okay, now returning. What does it mean returning? Can anyone tell me? Returning means coming back. Can you please correct this sentence if it is possible for you? My father returned back home. Please repeat after me. My father returned back home. Come on. Is there anything wrong here? You are right. My father returned home. Because return, the word return is explaining the meaning coming back, come back, came back. So no need of the word again returning back. It is not necessary at all. Now forget about all these words. Now let us come into the mood of the poem. Before going to this poem, just let me show you something. That is nothing but let us know about the poet. Who is this poet? Let us know about this man. Poet. Oh, Purushottam Chitre. What is the name of this poet? Purushottam Chitre. Name is really nice. Look at the photo. He is just uh, beside me. Okay. Ah, Dilip Purushottam Chitre. He was born on 17th September 1938. And he was up to... Uh, he just lived up to December 2009, December 10th. He was one of the foremost Indian writers and critics to emerge in the post-independence India. Pre-independence India, post-independence India. You are able to understand the word. Okay? Post-mortem, you know the word. Post-test, you know the word. Pre-test, you know the word. Pre-test means the test which is conducted before the commencement of the school, before starting of the school. My dear, my dear children and class children, you are going to have classes from February 1st, you no doubt. Physical classes. So the, before our classes start, one or, within one or two days, we may have pre-test. Okay. Post-test, pre-test, you are able to understand. We will write this post-test at the end of our ninth class. Post-independent India. Independence. Look at the word. Independent. Independence. Independency. Okay, na? Okay, you are right. Emerging independent of India. Apart from being a very important bilingual writer. Apart from being. Apart. Apart means in addition to. A bilingual writer. Linguist. Bilingualist. Polyglot. Look at the word. Bilingual. Writing in two languages is called bilingual. Okay? Polyglot means writing in so many languages. Linguist means one who writes things, one who writes articles, poems, or something uh, in a language. Okay? Linguist. Of course, I'm a linguist. I'm a bilingualist. I know Telugu as well as English very well. So, he also, okay, writing in Marathi and English. He was also... A painter and a filmmaker. Oh, he's a, he's a multi-talented person. Huh? Multi-talented. Look at the word. Multi-skilled. Multi-talented yeah. person. He's a filmmaker as well as he was a painter. Do you know how to paint? Okay, I know how to paint some hearts like that. But I don't know whether you are able to paint or not. Okay? When I paint a horse, it, it may look like a donkey. I don't know. If you paint horse, how it would be? Hours, okay. Okay, forget about this one. Filmmaker. Did you any time made any film? Filmmaker. No, I did not. In future, I don't know. His Ikna Kavita or collected poems were published in 1990s in three volumes. So, his collected poems. On anthology, we call it. Anthology in English. Collected poems. A small Poems collected book is called Anthology. His anthology was published in the uh, 1990s. 1995 like that so on. As is. Very selected English poems. And Shesha. These are the three collected poem books which he just published. 
English translation of selected Marathi poems both published by uh, Poetry Wala are among his last books published in 2007. Now you can understand he also published uh, uh, so many poems and those poems were appeared in a Poetry Wala. That was a magazine I think so. I don't know actually. Uh, he is also an uh, accomplished accomplished translator and has a prolifically translated prose and poetry. Okay, now you can understand he has just a wonderful knowledge in writing uh, what is that translated things. Translation you know. So I saw some uh, translation things. They are very, when, when you are translating live it will be very fantastic. Whole college if you say Mottong College So somebody will say College ki whole part in the they will say so this is a translation but his translations were wonderful he translated poetry translated prose so prolifically he was a wonderful translator especially from Marathi to English or some from English to Marathi I think so he started his a professional film career in 1969 and has since made one feature film about dozen documentary films several short films in the cinema format and about 20 video documentary features he also scored he also scored the music uh, for some of them so now my dear friends he is a multi talented person here is an example so what did he do he started his career in filmmaking in the film industry about dozen documentary films he made and also several several means number of Several means so many, so many short films in cinema format and about 20 video documentary features also he made. So he is a wonderful person. We can so this is called Dilip Purushottam Chitre. Now let us find the hard words in the poem. What are the what are those hard words? Glossary we will see. Look at these words which are from our textbook itself. Directly I am just posting you the textbook. Look at this one. Uh -huh. Commuters, passengers, soggy, this is an adjective, wet and soft, stale, no longer fresh. Opposite word of stale is, yes, fresh. The opposite word of fresh is stale. Contemplate, think seriously, think deeply. Okay, now, estrangement, separation, segregation. So, some meanings will be there. We will find those meanings while we were talking in the lesson. Even isolation, we will get for this one meaning. Parting, isolation, diverts, divide, like that. Sullen. Sullen means bad-tempered. Sullen means bad-tempered or distressed, something like that. Static. The noise that comes from the radio, especially the signals are weak. Some disturbing sound. Nomads. Nomads is no doubt a noun that is about a tribe. This is a word which represents a tribe, place to place a tribe. Subcontinent. Here, subcontinent. India has a subcontinental features. It is none other than subcontinent. India. Okay. Now, let's go and see the poem from the beginning. Shall we? Okay. Before going to the poem, just look at this picture. Here is a railway station. What is there? Railway station. Something is happening in the railway station. So don't focus on all the things. They are sitting the old woman and the woman and there is a porter is carrying something. Passengers are going. Don't focus on all these things. Just focus on the old man with a bald head. He was with a, what is that? A coat as well as a bag. And his spectacles are there. He is just getting down the train. He is getting down the train. And he's going. Where is he going? On seeing the title. Look at the title. Father returning home. You're right. Father is coming to his house. Father is coming back to his house. Look at the difference. Father is coming to his house is entirely different. Father is coming back. That is the original meaning we get here. Father is coming back. In the sense, he went in the morning to somewhere. Generally, where does they go? Where where does the old man go? Maybe. He's not such a old, I think so. He went for a work and he is returning. He went for a business, he is returning. He went to a hospital and he is returning. Maybe something you can expect. Now tell me, 
where did he go in the morning okay that is up to you you may expect according to you now let us come into our poem my father travels on the late evening train standing among silent commuters in the yellow light suburbs slid past his unseeing eyes his shirt and pants are soggy and his black raincoat stained with mud and his bag stuffed with books he is falling apart his eyes dimmed by age fade homeward through the humid humid monsoon night now i can see him getting off the train now i can see him getting off the train what what i can see here who is i here is no doubt i is the poet here the poet is talking to whom is he talking to whom is he talking to i don't know maybe to the readers maybe to the listeners maybe to the ninth class students maybe to you he is talking to you he is talking directly to you he is telling about his father my father okay now tell me what is your father hey don't say your father name i am asking what is your father my father is a farmer what about your father okay you are right good somebody are telling my father is a farmer my father is a businessman my father is a tailor very good okay no problem here my father what is your father means what is answer my father is a farmer what is your father name then you can say your father name my father travels on the late evening train why does he travel in the late evening train because the train is late yes no he has been working in the field or he has been working in the office or he has been working in the factory and is returning that's why it was it was late standing among the silent commuters look at the word commuters in the textbook just below the page yes you are right commuters means ha ah, come on commuters means passengers standing among the silent passengers why here is among okay if you use the between between means between two among means so many he was standing generally old man has to sit in the train no but why this man is standing because that's a local train and the passengers are so many during the what is that during the high hours peak hours important hours like office going hours returning hours so that's why this man is uh, standing in the train and did not get the seat standing among silent commuters in the yellow light suburbs slid past his unseeing eyes his shirt and pants are soggy oh now you can see soggy soggy means is a oh, there is a meaning just below in the textbook you may just open your textbook and see soggy there is a meaning soggy means wet and soft is a pant is a shirts is a shirt and pants were how are they wet i don't understand pant or pants scissor or scissors nobody will say scissor everybody has to say scissors because this is one scissor and this is another scissor yes sir no scissors pants one pant two pants yes sir no pants for one leg and another leg that's why we call pants we don't say shirts his shirt and pants are soggy and he is a black raincoat how is the coat but here in the picture it seems very white ha huh? i too thought it was a white black a white coat raincoat but it was black is a black raincoat stained with the mud there were marks mud marks m u d mud means oh, so you are right soil marks burada something like that something like that is a bag stuffed with books is a bag was full of books now you can understand he is a a oh, vivid reader he loves reading books or is a writer i don't know he is falling apart he is falling apart he just he was falling or something like that he was just missing but anyway his eyes dimmed by age his eyes dimmed by age fade homeward through the humid monsoon night now i can see him getting off the train now i can easily see him is getting the getting down the train getting off the train get on get off switch on switch off you know this word switch on the light you are right switch on just on switch off the light switch off get on the train 
get off the train okay getting off the train how was the day it was not the day yeah <laughs> okay how was the night the night was a monsoon monsoon night and how was the night that night was humid not a humid that one humid humid means humidity humidity means sultry sultry means okka pothaga unnatundi ratri do you understand his eyes dimmed by age his eyes were dim his eyes were not with a clear sight with a clear eyesight with a clear vision and there you can see his face was fading fading do you know do you understand the meaning of the word fade okay so fade means masi povadam something like that okay okay now you can understand how the man is is the man is described and the railway station is described in the first stanza of the poem shall we read once again this poem my father travels on the late evening train standing among silent commuters in the yellow light suburbs slid past his eye unseeing eyes his shirt and pants are soggy and his black rain coat stained with mud and his bag stuffed with books is falling apart his eyes dimmed by age fade homeward through humid monsoon night now i can see him getting off the train okay my dear students shall we go and see the next stanza okay let us see hmm like a word dropped from a long sentence like a word dropped from a sentence he hurries across the length of the gray platform crosses the railway line enters the line enters the la- lane look at the word his chappals are sticky with mud but he hurries onward now he is walking where is he walking he is walking where yes you are right he is walking to his house like a word dropped from a long sentence i write a big sentence such a long sentence just to just remove a word and throw it away so like that he was dropped from a sentence it is a linguistic way of expression that's it he hurries hurry hurries means walks very fast across the length of the gray platform the platform was such a long and he was just going across across you can understand not uh, along long means uh, there is a platform and he is walking like that and he, you see this is a platform and he is walking like that this is called walking across do you understand my dear children look at my picture look at my face look at my hands there you can easily understand what is along what is across what is over okay this is called along walking along the corridor walking along the platform across the platform there you can understand how was the platform the platform was in a gray color it was such a lengthy platform but it is not the matter about the length because he is not walking along the corridor along the platform he is just uh, crossing crosses the railway line oh he just also crosses the railway railway line railway railway track we can call it a line here crosses crosses means just goes away enters the lane l a n e lane lane means is away is uh, towards his home way 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 lane his chappals his chappals you can understand is not wearing shoes is just wearing chappals nobody say chappal chappals shoes nobody say shoe okay chappals because they are pair his chappals are sticky sticky means gummish sticky means stitch what what you can say gummish okay glue with the glue that glue was made of mud mud you know burra matti we call it but he hurries onward he just walks onward he doesn't want to stop he doesn't want to clean his chappals he doesn't want to remove that mud of the his chappals but he wants to hurry 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 fast walk fast to his house you see he is an old man i think i can understand he is working what is the reason of working doesn't he have children doesn't he have grandchildren aren't they caring this old man why aren't they caring this old man did not he earn much to their to their people <coughs> let us see what could be the reason in the next stanza hmm look at his house before going to this paragraph look at his house his bed his radio his radio shed 
set all these things. Hmm. Is ready set his chappals. Now he changed his dress. I think so. Now he is just uh, laying on the bed. Maybe he is sleeping. Home again. I see him drinking weak tea. I don't understand why is he drinking weak tea. Before going to contemplate on this one. Before going to contemplate. Think of this poem. Let us read this poem again. Home again. I see him drinking weak tea. Home again. I see him drinking weak tea. Eating a stale chapati, reading a book. He goes into the toilet to contemplate man's estrigament from a man-made world. Coming out, he trembles at the sink, the cold water running over his brown hands. A few droplets cling to the graying hairs on his wrists. His sullen children have often refused to share jokes and secrets with him. He will now go to sleep listening to the static on the radio. Dreaming, dreaming, dreaming of his ancestors and grandchildren. Thinking of nomads entering the continent through a narrow pass. What a, what a isolated life this is. Though he had sons and daughters, though he had wonderful grandchildren, now they are not taking care of this man. What is happening in the poem we will see. Home again I see him drinking weak tea. He came again to his house. But he was drinking what? What he was taking? He was taking weak tea. I don't know what is weak tea. I don't know what is uh, strong tea. Can you tell me? Strong tea. Okay. Strong tea means uh, with more milk and more tea powder. Yes or no? Just uh, cooking it for some time, boiling it for some other time, that is called strong tea. When you just go to a function, uh, if the people uh, are expected 100 and if they came nearly 3000 or 300, they will just mix up with the water, something like that and the tea becomes weak tea. So here, uh, this specially old man is treated especially with a weak tea. Eating a stale chapati, what a wretched life. What a worst life it is. He is eating stale chapati. The chapati is not fresh. Stale means opposite word of fresh. You see, when he was young man, when his children were with him, he never, he never served stale chapatis to his children. If there are any chapatis which were left over for the next day, he did not serve them to his children. Instead, he took them, his wife took them, they ate and they served their children a fresh chapatis. But today, he is not talking anything. He is not complaining. Is he complaining? No. Is he talking? No. Did he come by drinking? No, he did not come by drinking. He is not a drunkard. He is a hard worker. He just gathered something. He just made a house. He built a house. He just gathered some lands. Though he just possessed so many things, today, as his wife is no more, he has to satisfy, he has to fill his stomach with a stale chapati. Really, I can't stop my tears here. Eating a stale chapati and reading a book is a hobby. What was his hobby? Reading the books. Reading a book. What a wonderful hobby. He just searched a friend in his book. He was single, even not single now. Because he is reading and he is entertaining himself. He is enjoying himself. He goes into the toilet to contemplate. Generally, why does the people go to bathroom? You know, toilet, you know. But this man is going into toilet, bathroom to contemplate, to think over, to think deeply, to shed some tears, to wipe up his face. To clean his eyes and just think, what did I do? Is there anything wrong from my side? How did I grow my children? Why all these people are looking like this? Why are they not caring me? Maybe. Or is this going to happen even to my children? How are nomads? How are those people? So all these things he was thinking. Or he may be thinking something about the book he was reading. Nobody knows. Do you know? 
do i know maybe dilip chitre he knows because he wrote the poem man's is treatment man's is treatment look at the pronunciation of the word so so is is strange is treatment is treatment is no doubt man's is treatment from man made world he no longer is ready to live he wanted to isolate himself he wanted to divorce from this world or maybe from his sons or so on so man's instrument from man made world he wanted to he wanted to have a divorce he wanted to be isolated from this man made world man made world actually the world is made by god or maybe by big bang theory i don't know but the man is making this world really materialistic there are animals there are birds there are so many things to share the life share the uh, what is that air he is breathing they are breathing yes or no yes or no birds are breathing he is taking the same breath lions are breathing he is taking the same breath okay tractors are breathing i don't know they are not breathing they are releasing such a carbon dioxide and is they are increasing those things are man made and people are running after materialistic wealth that is what just bothers this man coming out he trembles at the sink just comes out and it just trembles just fears uh, he doesn't know how to open or i don't know huh? the cold water running over his brown hands he was just uh, washing his hands with the cold water no hot water at all a few droplets a few drops a few drops stopped there to the graying hairs on his breasts so on his uh, breast we can see some gray colored hair gray means this is a old man's scenario we can say his sullen children have often refused to share jokes and secrets with him his sullen children sullen bad tempered depressed they are not ready to uh, share everything with this old man when does this old man die that is their thinking why this man is living here he could share everything with us and go that is their feeling these type of people are there in the society my dear children there are even now i see he yeah, talking to the parents hey, even how many years will you scold me you may scold me for 2 or 3 years you may scold me for 10 years come on scold me ha huh? that is what the children are telling and some children are telling if you die you die no problem come on when will you die ha huh? why did you come back from the hospital there are some children i saw when i see this type of children no i don't know what is happening in this world why the children are behaving like that his sullen children have often often refused to share jokes <coughs> and secrets with him he will now go to sleep now this man is going to sleep no doubt he will now he will go will is explaining compulsory mandatorily is going to sleep listening to the radio but i am sorry this radio is not giving a wonderful sound because the old you the radio is also an old one what is it giving it is just giving a static sound what does it mean static disturbing noise some disturbing noise is coming from the radio like uh, when signals are not connected properly some sounds will come in the radio just like air sound like that dreaming he was dreaming he was dreaming and he was sleeping what was he dreaming he was dreaming of his ancestors how my forefathers how my grandparents how my parents parents and their forefathers and their ancestors how did they live how did they ha huh? how did they how did they behave how their children looked them and he was also thinking about the grandchildren my my grandchildren my sons children my daughters children how they will look how they will treat these people thinking 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 he was also thinking he was just going back he was just coming forward he was just going back and he was coming forward and he was thinking of nomads nomads are the tribes they lived from place to place they roamed from place to place in the search of food hunting animals hunting birds and so on they were tribes they were none other than adavi manushulu we call so nomads entering the subcontinent through a narrow pass how did they come how nomads came to this world and he was just go on thinking 
contemplating contemplating not only in the bathroom and also not only dreaming here he was also in the house and he was just go on thinking i don't know my dear children it is a really a wonderful lesson to contemplate how you are looking your parents how your parents are looking your grandparents are you taking care of them if your parents are not taking care of your grandparents come on take an initiative as a ninth class boy as a good girl come on take an initiative go to them talk to them share some jokes come on tell that cycles are told today in online class like this because i tell always my children i tell always everywhere love always comes from the above come on repeat after me love always comes from the above come on once again repeat after me love always comes from the above only means from god to grandparents from grandparents to parents from parents to children love never returns that is what so many wonderful people told but my dear ninth class students come on reverse this one you are the wonderful people you can change this you love your parents you love your grandparents and love your god love your teachers come on show some some what is that sympathy towards your grandparents go to them not giving food not giving money not giving what is that alcohol all these are not the matter go to them talk to them share your jokes share your feelings share your thoughts with them no doubt they are a good listeners don't say sir ma taati ku chevulu pani cheyadam ledhi don't say like that it is not true if you share share with them your feelings they also start sharing their wonderful experiences they will tell you wonderful stories there are some people there are some ninth class students among you they are good listeners they listen to their grandparents stories do you love this lesson my dear students yes sir no okay now we will go to some questions in the next session thank you bye see you let us meet in the next session